بس كنت كده كان وايلد كارد درافت بيفور اور باس تيمز شو ليتس دو ات اتس ات اتس ون درافت اند وي ار غونت توك اباوت هاو ات بيسيكلي فلوز ثرو اوكي ام ان ذا فيريس ويكس بيكوز ات هاز ا بلان اسينشلي اوف هاو تو مانوفر So again, it's not going to be about specific picks. I mean, if you don't like Liverpool, obviously you made this before this news of Dan Burn possibly being back. Pick someone else. But essentially, what it is is, you've got two keepers around this four million, four and a half million. You could pick Leno. You could pick uh, Ariola. This is this Neto. is what Dubravka and Flecken. Yeah, exactly. So it has Flecken and Dubravka because Flecken for the double in the future and Dubravka until he's he's nailed. Uh, defense, I think, fairly picks itself, which is Poro, Trent. one arsenal defender pau torres who we talked about in the pod and a newcastle defender this can change in terms of you could have a tripier from next week or you can bench him this week or um, you know you instead of a pau torres you could have a colwell instead of a, a gabriel you could have an aston villa defender so there are some variations on defense pass just yeah let's pause here at defense and just like let's let's, let's do a round up in terms of where we would go if we were on wild card zoff would you go tripier or trent tripier But again, that's a fixture yeah. play, right? The fixtures are pretty dicey for Newcastle from twenty on. I think it's. I would probably go for Trent given the fixture run alone. Trent's fixtures aren't good. Trent's fixtures aren't good for a long let's, time. Let's again, they play Chelsea look. and I'm but they're home games. So, and... so again, you're talking about this week is your wild card, right? Ultimately, you'd be benching Trippier then. Then you'd be playing him yeah. for Luton away, which is not a great clean sheet fixture. Again, Forest at home is good. Then Liverpool away, Man City at home, Villa away again poor. Then the fixtures reverse. Yes, exactly. So, so three how many clean sheets do you there. see for Trippier? Then let's assume seventeen Fulham is out of the way. I see what after that you see maybe three, two to three, two. I think two yeah, would be but... what I wanted to say, but three is a more optimistic one. But yeah, let's look at Liverpool. A, you can play Trent this week. Go ahead. You're saying something. The problem with Newcastle was they're down on their last legs, but the news that we have is a lot of their injured players are coming back. Burns coming back. And from twenty, you resets, uh, right? Twenty every up post exactly. twenty, everything resets. Exactly. So a fit and fresh Newcastle, I think our purview needs to change, which is why again Trippier is capable of those ten, ten, twelve, thirteen pointers in those three easy fixtures as well, uh, between twenty three and twenty five. So there's plenty of money in the bank in this one, by the way. So you can you can upgrade in other. I think it's 1.5 million in the bank, but because this doesn't have Haaland. But in defense in general, so we've. I mean, you could have both, by the way. You could have Trent and Trippier and sacrifice somebody like a Saka. But we'll talk about that variation yeah. later. But I think generally speaking, these are the five defenses you want to cover, right? I mean, you want Spurs, Poro. You want you want Trent. You want Trippier or somebody, but a Newcastle defender, an Arsenal defender, and Villa. Do we agree that that's roughly where you want to go? Maybe yeah, John Stones, Stones, maybe Chelsea yeah. as a as an outside, yeah. slightly different. Yeah. Let's come to midfield. So Sun, Salah, Saka is in there. Palmer is in there. Four we talked about. Richarlison is in here now for the reasons of maybe you get lucky he plays in through the middle, but you want Richarlison when Sun goes to Asia Cup anyway. So good pick that you can have now that pretty much nobody will have for the next three four weeks. So midfield, what would you change? I like it because ultimately the main thing you're doing over here, the only concern that over here is the money being spread to the eighth attacker a little bit. That's for me, but again, that's for me. Me playing traditional FPL, the FPL traditional rules go out the window from like the next few weeks, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and eight attacker is going to be useful in the next four weeks, like it's which I will show exactly. Yeah, you have hit the nail on the head. So this week mm. is a is a pain because I've benched Palmer home to Sheffield mm. United. That's, that's what's that's what's worrying me. Just looking at that. <laughs> But it he'll help you next week because you'll have to bench Alvarez next week. So if you go to the next image now, actually no, let let's finish this. So midfield, I think generally there will be less of a discussion. You could go Saka down to a Gordon, and you could upgrade Livramento to a Trippier and bench Trippier this week. That's also an option. You basically and if you don't want to play this, if you don't want to play the squad game, uh, then I think you upgrade a Palmer to an Odegaard or something of that sort. If you fancy a pick like that or Bowen at that price point, yeah. is what you could do. Could do that as well. Good to that. Yeah. So the Saka basically downgrade I'm talking about is simply because what you would do is you get the Trippier now. Instead of Saka, you come down to a Gordon or someone else in that price range. Then when Sun leaves for Afcon, Sun becomes Saka temporarily. So it's a different structure. So you don't need to reshuffle. Salah, you cannot use the money because Salah will fund Haaland, which we will show you in the next iteration. Up top, I think this one is the least debatable. You want Watkins, Solanke, and Alvarez as the three strikers. Do does it? Do you disagree? These are the three guys to get if you're on wildcard. 
Alvarez is a person... holder for Haaland, right? Correct. Or you get lucky and he Haaland is delayed and you get the best striker in the game. What like would be the only one to Haaland? Let's assume, pushing sorry, these Alad. guys Go on. Go ahead. is Gabriel Jesus. That's it. Like yeah. Only the fourth guy sitting outside of these three is Gabriel Jesus. And if you're playing the eighth attacker game, then Jimenez. Like I think this that's the pool of strikers we're looking at. What's yeah, the route back to Haaland over here selling Salah in 20? So let's go. Let's go Go to the next image. Do you have all the four? That yes, I, I have all four. Okay, so this is basically, that was game week 18. Uh, sorry, which game week are we in now? Game 17, week uh, 17. We're in 17. Now let's go to game week 18. So now you can see here, no transfers made. Alvarez is now benched. You can even bench Trent. You can bench Gabriel. You you have superb three strikers. One uh, Sorry, three defenders. Poro, Everton, Pau Torres and Livramento. Three great games. Your midfield is all ready to go. You have Solanke and Watkins with excellent fixtures in 18. So you're set for the blank using the wildcard. Get to the next image. Pause. You know, in, in case you're on wildcard as well and... Uh, one thing you do need to do is what Pras has done here is when you're building your team and planning your team a shout out to FPL uh, team FPL dot team where Pras has done this planning where you can forward see where what your fixtures are going to look like in the upcoming game mix as well so I just thought we'd give a shout out to them correct, correct. Um, game week 19 there is no transfer made here either so this gives you a buffer for if it's something happens to Richarlison something happens to Sun Solanke Watkins you move laterally so no transfers made still you basically have your defense back, your Gabriel, your Trent, who you benched in the last game week. You still have your Newcastle defense. You have your four midfielders. Again, you can, you have to bench Palmer against Crystal Palace, which is not ideal, but it gives you that option. Alvarez, if Haaland is back by then, then you can maybe basically not play Alvarez. You can play a Palmer, but even I think Alvarez would be okay. And then the fourth image is the important one, which is basically you get Haaland back against Sheffield United by doing Salah to Foden. And you do Alvarez to um, to to Holland. Yeah. So this is your Bowen or to... anybody else. Yeah, yeah. because anybody. Salah's Any gone from twenty one anyway, right? So it's only yeah. one week effectively losing. Or who does Salah have in twenty? Newcastle. Yeah, it's not the best fixture either. So this is why a route to Holland through Salah is basically you you sell Salah before Newcastle at home, and then he's off to Afcon, so you don't need him, and then you get Holland back in game week twenty. This would be at least our suggested or. You know, a thinking around how you could walk through a a Haaland out team. The the spanner in this is if Haaland is nearly back, then you'll be stuck whether you should have him on the bench or when. How will you get Haaland back? And that's something I have not considered here. You just have to sort of assume that even if he's fit, you're going to close your eyes. And you can go without be... him till 19, man. Pretty much exactly. like you said, you won't captain. Just bite the bullet, go without 19, buy him in 20. Correct. If he's definitely starting, if Pep says, "Oh, scan fine, he's fit." Of then course, you, so you have him. That's for this weekend yeah. you're talking. Yeah. I like how optimistic you are on that. I'm, well, I really don't think that's happening, but I do hope it does. Make but like, if that is the case, this is yeah. just planning for all scenarios, Correct. right? So you get him, right? Irrespective. 100%. Irrespective. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just want to shout out also, uh, you know, it's we're one hour in the podcast as well. Uh, if you've enjoyed all the forward planning, helicopter view, wildcard draft building that we're doing here, uh, just please give us a like and subscribe. We had uh, end of the year, 30,000 subscriber target. I think we're about 1,200, 1,300 off still. I th I don't think we're going to achieve our 30,000 subscriber target Optimism. by the end of Let's the year. Let's be optimistic. Why not? If you guys want to change us and uh, change that and hope that we can be optimistic by the time the next uh, uh, podcast is out, please click the like and subscribe button. And if you want to hang around with us, uh, you can become a member on YouTube or jo join us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash FPL wire. Uh, we have a Discord server where there's some great people on there. Uh, apologies to them. I've been busy since the last week. I haven't spent that much time on the Discord, but that will change in Jan once uh, family commitments are done. Bus yeah, teams? Excellent. Well, one more thing to actually add on the wildcard. Uh, and I should have started with that. There's people with the wild card that are debating if they should play it this week or game week 19 or game week 20. And I think it's fairly straightforward. If you have Haaland now and you have, let's say, a, a Bruno and a Trippier, I think it's time. You you pull the you yeah. pull the wild card. And you play this scenario where you go, you build a non-Haaland team and then you get Haaland. If you don't have Haaland, firstly, congratulations. You've become you got very lucky that he's, he's out now and the whole world is trying to get to your team structure. I think you can easily wait till game week 20. Game week 20 is the last week you can play it in. You basically continue and you play without your Haaland strategy and you then just follow through and then in game week 20, 
you can build your team. You don't need to have the Salah double out. You can just build your team. You take out Salah anyway, but you can spread it a lot better and you just wildcard and give Week 20. Yeah. That would be our advice. So the fact that double game Week 20 now is out the window changes the strategy a little bit because that's possibly when you could see to hold the wildcard for. I think this is a good week to do it. Ella? I just wanted a piece of advice to wildcarders as well. You know, looking at, especially if you have to build a Haaland less draft you have more money than you need right like one thing you need to be very very wary of while building this wild card is price bias like just because you have money you don't have to spend it as something just pick the good players irrespective of the price it's almost going to be difficult to do that but i think it's going to be the most difficult challenge that wild carders are going to have because uh they're going to go for a pick that's about three million more and might not necessarily just be a better fpl pick also so i think that's potentially something you need to be wary of absolutely Past teams, guys. The man with wood first. 